Now, I know I have a young audience. I know there are a lot of people in my audience who are like 16, 17, 18, you know. But I do know that most of you were alive back for 2017, unless you are a literal baby. Uh, and during that time, you probably remember that one of the biggest um, uh, focal points of culture war discourse was over college campuses and crazy far left students using cancel culture to try to prevent public speakers from going to those campuses and also to attack their professors. We all remember that? Come on, raise your hand if you remember that. I, I know, come on. The whole, th the whole thing, Charlie Kirk, Ben Shapiro, Milo Yiannopoulos, 2017, 2018. It's a big, big, big thing. Jordan Peterson, his whole f goddamn thing. Remember the Jordan Peterson video that one professor showed and it was the kind of bad, but not really that bad. And then people were like, oh, we remove him. And it was back and forth, back and forth. Well, folks, uh, I am happy to announce that I have now renounced my leftist uh, pedigree. I am now uh, joining the right side of the culture war because I have finally seen an example of this in the wild and it does not make me happy. Hold on. This, uh, I can understand why people end up moving over to the right uh, with stuff like this, because this evokes in me almost like an instinctual, violent reaction. Um, so, a person on Twitter tweeted, um, please read my professor's email. And they posted a professor's email. Hi, Morgan. Thank you for reading the syllabus, and thank you for your message. Of the six assigned books for the course, I should probably give you context. This is for a queer studies course, you know, like LGBT stuff. Um, and the freshman student uh, emailed their professor uh, because they learned their professor was white and wanted to make sure a sufficient amount of the curriculum of that course uh, was written by non-white authors. So we'll get to that in a second. Of the six assigned books for the course, three of them are written by non-white authors. Unruly Visions includes works by diasporic authors, including black writers. Cruising Utopia is a decidedly Latin text. And A Little Gay History refers to a worldwide selection of mostly non-white examples. There are also references to black queer culture in Impossible Dance, Queer Styles, and Queer, A Graphic History. You are right, none of these books are written by black writers, but I think black queer culture is represented in these works. I don't believe that black culture is only representable by a black author. To me, that is a very limited view. There will be several films by black artists, including Watermelon Woman and Paris is Burning. I, I remember Paris is Burning. That was quite the film. I may also screen Tongues Untied if we have time. I myself regret there is very little representation of socioeconomically challenged queer folk, though Paris is Burning is a good, if limited, representation. By its nature, a, a syllabus is exclusionary. The professor must make difficult decisions, but I am happy with the syllabus. It is imperfect, but it does its best in terms of representation of minority cultures. But that said, my first priority in devising a syllabus is not representation of minority cultures. The priority is to assign readings that I want students to read, according to my purposes as I imagine the course to ideally be. That is a task that only the professor is tasked with and qualified to do. If you're dissatisfied with the syllabus, I suggest you drop the course. Best, Michael. And then this person tags the college. And then they say that they'll be getting a meeting with the dean to discuss things alongside the professor. Elsewhere, they name the professor, essentially doxing them. Now, we can take a look at this again. I'm going to take a hard stance on this one. That professor's email is completely fucking fine. First of all, I wish the queer studies course that I could have taken in college would have had that diverse a range of fucking uh, 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 media sources to read from. Are you fucking kidding me? A fucking queer studies course? Of, of, and half of them are written by non-white authors? And it's like from a queer perspectives in a bra... You, just ten years ago... Queer studies, uh, in the first, the, I'm just speaking from an academic perspective. First of all, queer studies in this country just 10 years ago would have literally just been like American white queer history, okay? This professor seems like they have gone above and beyond in a diverse representation of queer, uh, uh, of queer studies. Um, don't shit talk them, our queer studies course did indeed a majority by POC writers. That's why I said 10 years ago, hyena, because I know, I know that we've come a really long way in a really short time. Intersectional acceptance of different um, uh, um, uh, yeah, of, of, of sort of uniting and cross-analyzing all these different threads. That's, I mean, it's only gotten better with time. 
Professors using Latinx instead of Latina was kind of cringe. Find another hair to split. The point is, this is a fine email. There's nothing wrong with it. The syllabus looks fine. The professor looks fine. And some people at the end are mad here. If you're dissatisfied with the syllabus, I suggest you drop the course. Nah, fuck that. If you have a freshman student who... Okay, so first of all, we didn't see the email that the freshman student sent. But we do know that this freshman student was on Twitter saying, Oh, my queer studies professor is white. So I already don't trust this motherfucker at all. Okay? If you, if you think that queer studies can't be taught by a white person or you intrinsically distrust white professors, I'm, I don't give a shit about you already. Um, like, like, by nature, okay? Like, honestly, that's such a terrible fucking standard to take. Um, and so we don't know what email this person sent to the professor. We didn't get to see it. We don't see how... Uh, we don't see how rude it is. We don't see how presumptuous it is. We don't see them say something like, given the fact that you're white, I don't know if I trust that you're willing to represent, so on and so forth. We have no idea. But if I was a professor, and I'd been doing this for years and years and years and years and years, and I constructed what seems to be a pretty excellent syllabus um, on this subject, and some fucking freshman student coming into my class emails me questioning the syllabus, I think it's totally fine to say drop the course. Have you guys never had like a tough professor? I think a lot of people really do expect college professors to coddle them, okay? That is not their fucking job, all right? College professors are not there to coddle you, okay? They're there to teach you and to not abuse you, okay? That's it. That's their two, those are the two, that's, that's the range, okay? You, you got, that's, that's your whole fucking scope, okay? They don't need to give a fuck about you. They don't need to be nice to you. They don't need to be fucking uh, accommodating of your criticisms of the course. They teach the course. You take it or you do not take it. Okay? So a lot of people, I think, I mean, this is a common college a freshman thing as well. Because um, a lot of them just come out of high school. And high school teachers are one half teacher, one half babysitter. Okay? I'm sorry if there are any high school students who are watching this right now. But when you go to class, you are being babysat. All right? That is half of what they are doing. That is, that, is, uh, that is a significant portion of their job, okay? Um, about ha high school teacher, teachers in general, okay, uh, for that age range, are not taught like, here's the optimal way to deliver this information in a context. They're, you are going to be teaching a horde of sweaty dipshits who are more concerned with jerking themselves off through their pants pockets than they are listening to you. They will be on their phone. They will have earbuds in. They will not be paying attention. They will be doodling in the margins. And you have to, in some way, shape, or form, deliver some fragment of the curriculum to them, okay? And in doing so, you are going to have to babysit them. You will babysit the fuck out of them. You will employ every psychological tactic we can possibly teach you to get kids to listen to you for a fraction of a second, okay? That is what high school teachers are. So if that's the environment you're used to, and I have a feeling this is this the person who posted those tweets is probably the type of person who got on their teacher's nerves quite a bit, um, and, uh, and was accommodated for it, you know. Um, if that's what you're used to, and then you go to university, and there's a uni and a professor who just um, uh, who, who just doesn't give a fuck about you and just wants to teach the course, that can be like a little hurtful. Uh, it is not your job, or it's not their job to babysit you at all, um, even slightly. Yeah, here's the original tweet, by the way. Just saw my queer politics class as taught by a white man. I'm going to go through all the required readings, and if there isn't at least one black author, I will be calling him out in the first day of class. Does this seem to you like somebody who's approaching this this issue uh, in, a, in a in a good manner? You know? Like, does, does this seem like somebody who's, like, in making a good faith effort? The funny thing is, people like this are usually really bad advocates as well. Every person I've ever met who acts like this about any issue um, usually actually knows very little about it and is a terrible fucking advocate for those people, you know? So this is queer studies, right? So I have a feeling that this person is probably pretty dumb when it comes to queer studies and race issues, you know? Um, I'm sure they're very, like, woke, um, you know? Like, they're very sensitive. But I don't know how good you can be on race issues if you're of the opinion that a white professor on a subject should be held to a higher standard than a non-white professor. Um, that's a really fucking bad precedent to set, you know? Like, what, so what, like, I, I, I don't know, that's such a weird, like, would we have to hold black professors to a higher standard if in like a, in like a fucking business course? 
because white people are more like familiar with business because we've been historically ingrained in business culture and black people were kept from it for hundreds of years because of systemic like that be but that'd be weird wouldn't it right if you were coming into a business course and you saw your professor was black and you were like i don't know how well they're i, mm, I don't know Bosch, I disagree. I do think white professors need to be aware of including BIPOC authors in their courses, which they often do not. Yeah, but there are also black people who don't as well. We can't do the Candace Owens thing where it's like, uh, where, you know, your race determines your ideological orientation. If there is an issue with the curriculum, it should have nothing to do with the race of the people. And the curriculum seemed to be pretty excellent from what I could see. Um, but, uh, but I don't like this, like, the idea of like, oh, my professor's white, tried, hmm, time to... Time to hold them to a higher standard. That's bullshit. It's not good. And it's not social justice either. It's not. It doesn't serve anyone. It doesn't benefit anyone. Um, how do we determine when a work is blinded by the author's race, gender, and class? You just, By comparing it to other works. That's what you can do. I'll, I've always been of this opinion. People can cringe at it if you want, but you're all fucking wrong. Okay? Experience does not give you any better an understanding of a tough subject. Trans people do not have a better A, understanding of, and B, ability to defend transness or being trans. They are more familiar with it personally. I mean, that's for sure. But personal familiarity doesn't mean shit. Would you only listen to opinions on military strategy from somebody who's a veteran? Like, think about that for a moment. Is that who you want to be listening to? Would you only, like, listen to, uh, w like, would you only listen to, like, uh, uh, I don't know, a uh, uh, high-class business culture from, like, uber-wealthy people? Is that what you want to hear from, you know? Like, Hmm, what is it like to be, like, uber-wealthy and work at, like, Enron? Like, hmm, well, let's listen to this biopic written by a multi-billionaire that spends half the time talking about how uh, much of a struggle it was to keep his mistress away from his two wives. Like, no. Um, people can be blinded by personal experience. People can be not blinded by personal experience. Uh, people's arguments and ideas should be held in a vacuum. Um, or not, sorry, I, I clarify not in a vacuum, but should be considered on their own merits. And if there is influence from their experiences uh, of being a part of any given demographic or be, from not being a part of any given demographic, I think you should be able to justify those biases. But if you start believing that white people or black people should be held to different standards when it comes to the presentation of certain material, your bias is going to lead you to see biases where there are none. So even if a black professor might also not have included much by POC representation in a curriculum, you would hold the white professor to a higher standard and call them out when you wouldn't do the same for a black professor, and vice versa for a black professor with a different issue. And what that means is your attempt to avoid other people's biases is only creating bias in yourself. Is that not a conservative argument? No. Oh, you did a Papago there, so you knew you were joking. No, it's not. Conservatives don't make good arguments. And what I'm making right now is a good argument. Um... Uh, so it can't be a conservative argument by definition. Vosh, intersectionality is important. This tangent is ass. If you, you don't know what intersectionality is. If you think that anything I'm saying right now is in any way, shape, or form not intersectionality, then you don't understand what intersectionality is. I would strongly suggest you read more theory, my friend. Uh, Lenin wrote on intersectionality, okay? You can get to that. <laughs> um. Anyway, I really do hope that the... um. I really do hope the professor gets to keep his job. You know, I wouldn't be paying this much attention at all if it was just one random person. The issue is that there are 33.6 thousand people who liked this. Now, there are a lot of people who are pushing back. I would be one of them, obviously. Um, but the, the, the responses here are absolutely full of people who are yes-queening uh, this behavior, which is just not acceptable. It's just not. Look at the replies. No, I don't... Never, never scroll through Twitter, okay? We you never just scroll through Twitter. Um, you can do it through YouTube comments because you can't embed images, but you can't do it on Twitter, okay? It's a dangerous, dangerous game. Um, yeah, or Reddit. Well, Reddit, the images are minimized. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, I, I wouldn't, I really just, I wouldn't care. Um, nice job. This person's getting a white progressive professor in trouble. The folks are really out here taking down allies. Yeah, for sure. That's the thing, too. The woke police are only ever coming after their own as well. Like, this professor seems like he has a pretty good understanding of and respect for, like, diverse queer representation, and we're out here firing him when I guarantee you somewhere on that college campus there's a business professor currently fucking one of their students, or more else, somewhere off the college campus there's a fascism happening, you know? The, the idea that, like, 
uh, uh, you you can make society more progressive by attacking people who are ninety nine percent of the way there is fucking ridiculous, you know. Yeah, the woke police never, ever, 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 ever go for conservatives. And that's the thing. And that's the argument. That's the criticism that I initially levied. You get more social capital by attacking people who are closer to wokeness than you. It doesn't demonstrate you're very woke if you're criticizing somebody who believes black people are subhuman. Any reasonable person should be able to believe that black people aren't subhuman. No, you get the most woke points by attacking people who are as close to you as possible. Because by enunciating the very, very tiny differences between your perspectives and their perspectives and blowing it up to massive proportions, you're able to distinguish yourself from other people and thus, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, put yourself on a pedestal um, when it comes to that uh, behavior. Uh, I used to do this myself. I have since stopped doing this myself. Uh, I don't think it's a very good way of promoting progressive issues. I don't think it's a very good way of making the world a better place. I don't think it makes uh, uh, life better for black people. I don't think it makes life better for, for queer people. I don't think it makes life better for anyone, except for the person who's doing the canceling. And it doesn't even make life better for them, because let's be real, the people who act like this are paranoid freaks who are constantly worrying about things that aren't real issues uh, and are usually uh, uh, too anxiety-ridden to uh, actually handle the... Uh, blowback from the social consequences that uh, uh, arise from their attempts to cancel. So it doesn't make anyone happy. Nobody gets made happy from this. Engaging in this behavior is very anxiety-inducing from both perspectives. When I did this from the perspective of the hyper-woke canceler, you know, back like five, six, seven years ago, it just made me anxious. It didn't make me happy. It just was something I felt like I had to do because it was what you do in those social circles. So... Godspeed to them. Godspeed to this person and to the professor. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes, huh?